Merrill Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council. It's a very good morning now to the Dubbo Region Mayor, Matthew Dickerson. And Matt, how were Anzac Day services? Because you got to preside and you bought some bling, I think, didn't you? I did get to put the bling on. And I must say that Council can't take any credit for the wonderful Anzac Day services. The RSL sub-branch runs the services there. We do our part. We make sure the grounds look in fantastic condition. We make sure that we've got chairs set up, etc. But the RSL sub-branch do do a fantastic job running those services. And the community does a fantastic job, Brett, in turning up. I think at least 2,500 were at the dawn service and probably 5,000 or more were at the main service. So it was a really, really good day. Yeah, sorry, I missed that a bit. There's a bit of noise in the background, Brett. I, I missed the question no, there, sorry. No, that's all right. I'm just mentioning Ray's beef on 100th oh, birthday. Yes, and I had the pleasure of going along to Ray's actual party on Saturday, so a couple of days after Anzac Day, and he's done a fantastic job in his commitment to the community. He spent 60 years in legacy after serving in World War II, and probably, as Jeff Mann said on the day, probably the last... Spitfire pilot left alive on the planet and he's a fascinating gentleman to talk to I had a good chance to talk to him on Saturday at his birthday celebration so yeah a really uplifting experience there Brett yeah good to see the community come out and honour Ray and of course all of those who have fallen for us and served uh, for us and now we might mention that you're actually at the airport ready to board a plane uh, where are you off to you're coming home are you just going back to Dubbo yes I just had to duck down to, to Sydney and just coming back in this morning so I do apologise for the noise in the background I'm in as quiet a place as I could find in the airport but it's still a bit noisy <laughs> <laughs> not, not sure if there's any quiet places there Matt uh, no that's right let's talk about the expressions of interest for the Dream Festival Murray Wood on the show yesterday saying that technology let us down with this one yeah, it was a bit disappointing. We we got to the point where we said we received no expressions of interest, which I was very disappointed about initially. But then we spoke to a couple of organisations who said they actually had put in an EOI. And then we talked to our IT department at council and they went and looked through it and they could see where people had gone through and actually made some steps but didn't quite get to the submit button and there were still some boxes to be ticked before they could submit so we actually reopened those for another week so that's open until Thursday this Thursday at 5 p.m to allow people that chance to go and put those in we've had a good look at the process and we've just streamlined that process ever so much so those couple of organizations that said they put them in and anyone else who might have put one in that we weren't aware of then that's open again so yes there will be some expression of interest submitted and technology hopefully won't let us down this time. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, let's talk about Kintyre Heights, the unapproved uh, clearing there. What, what's going on with this? This is one of those things where conditions of a DA were not met in the way they should have been and there's a, a bit of discussion around whether or not there was a mistake made on council's behalf or on the developer's behalf but ultimately there was some clearing done that shouldn't have been done and we basically got to the point where council said Putting a 20-year rehab management plan in place will satisfy the conditions to fix up that that error. And uh, again, the developer will have the conditions of their DA released as part of the DA. After the 20 years of that rehab management plan, then uh, essentially that'll be handed back to council. Now, I want to stress in this, Brett, I don't believe that this was a deliberate decision by this particular developer. I think it was a genuine mistake. And again, there's a rectification for that genuine mistake. So some people have this view of developers being big, bad people that are going to rape the environment. And again, in this particular scenario, I don't think that was the case. I think it was a simple mistake. And I think that will be rectified to everyone's satisfaction. All right, let's uh, get an update. I know Murray, I did talk with him about the Macquarie Conservatorium. It seems like that um, your help from council no longer needed with the premises of it. And I must admit, Brett, I am a little bit disappointed about this. There was a fair bit of debate and maybe even a bit of controversy last year in March and April when this was being discussed. The conservatorium is a great facility in Dubbo. All four of my kids have been through the conservatorium, so I'm a big fan of the conservatorium. But the Department of Ed had said they had to move out of their current building. This is several years ago they were given this information. But at the last minute, it seemed to be 
all council's fault. In fact, it was even thrown around that if the conservatorium closed, it was all going to be council's fault. We were going to be blamed for the conservatorium closing. And I was a bit disappointed about that angle, if you like, because there was a board for the conservatorium and they had the responsibility to find somewhere else for them to go. In the end, councillors said... We will give you the Carpet Court building, the building beside the theatre. We'll give that to you for five years with no rent or peppercorn rent. So basically a dollar a year and then another five years we'll give you, but we'll renegotiate the rent for that second five years. Now, we thought they'd sign that up as quickly as possible. It dragged on for many months, many months, Brett, and there are discussions with our staff and the conservatorium and no lease was signed. Obviously, they were meant to be thrown out of the Department of Air building at some stage. That wasn't seeming like it was going to happen. And in the end, I actually stepped in and sent a letter through because I wanted to bring it to a head. It needed to have some finalisation. We had a building there which we believe we could rent out for at least $56,000 a year that wasn't being used by anyone, no good to the community and no income for council. So in the end, finally, in April this year, a year after we made the offer to them, the Conservatorium sent us a letter and said, thanks very much, but we don't need the Carpet Court building anymore. So that's a year that that dragged on where we could have had someone in there leasing that the conservatorium will be where they are now for an extended period. We don't know how long, but that's great for Dubbo. But I suppose that's disappointing that we missed out on that income and, and didn't actually end up helping them in the end. All right, Matt. Time is uh, be before us. You've got to catch a plane and we'll catch up, hopefully, with you on Friday as well. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Right, appreciate that, Brett. Thanks very much. Dubbo Regional Meryl Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council.